guys. So, this is the first lesson in our course about embedded Linux using Zinc. Okay? In this course, we're going to learn uh, from the basics to put Linux working in our Z board up to development, dev uh, development of device drivers. Okay? So, we create an IP core and then we create a device driver that controls this IP core to another app in the, in the user mode to access it and do something. Okay, we're going to learn how to debug apps that uh, that are working Linux, and uh, and by the way, the first question: Why we should use Linux in our embedded systems? Okay, hope you guys enjoyed. The this course can be a little bit long because there are so much topics that we need to see, but uh, it's going to be fun. I promise. Okay, so uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like, give me a thumbs up. We're going to the board now to explain. The, the basics on what you're going to do in this lesson, okay? Which is basically putting Linux to boot on the Z board, okay? Uh, so, ciao, ciao, and let's start it. So, guys, those are the topics that you are going to learn in this course, okay? Which is embedded Linux on the, on the Z board, okay? We're going to start with Petal Linux, but later we're going to, uh, to build our own Linux without any tools, just, uh, just restart it easy. Okay, so here, what we're going to learn. First of all, why Linux, okay? Why we choose to use Linux in our embedded project, okay? Then, we're going to learn how to create and boot a project on Zinc, okay? How to create an app and include on the rootfs. We're going to learn what, what is a rootfs anyway. Uh, device drivers, okay? So, we're going to create some, uh, some IP cores that is, are going to be included in our, uh, in our Vivado project and we're going to create drivers that, that are going to expose their functionality to the user space, okay? Then, we're going to learn, uh, probably not in this order, we're going to learn how to debug in Linux and something about networking. Network, sorry, not networking. So, uh, let's start from the first topics, probably those two here and up to probably here, those, those three. Let's see wha what we can do in a short video. Okay, so, okay. so lots of device drivers. Okay, what this means? Uh, by using Linux, you don't need, for instance, to rewrite uh, an USB stack, okay? The Linux will have with you, okay? So, uh, also, you don't need to write uh, uh, an I2Square uh, library to, to actually access uh, some uh, some IC in your board. Linux also support. And actually there are thousands of other device drivers that are that are there that you can just use it. Uh, another one for instance GPRS modules, okay? So this is actually a really important topic. There is a lot of support to a lot of hardware. Okay? Network and file system support. Okay? Network just means that by using Linux you already have a TCP IP stack for you. So, uh, you don't need to write a TCP IP stack or, uh, or UDP on your own, okay? And file system support, in this case the X4 or X3, uh, this is also really important because uh, it's going to allow your system to use, for instance, a, a, an SD card or a USB stick and uh, you'll be able to, to use it without no problem, okay? Memory management means that uh, different processes, okay? Can share, uh, can, uh, can share and use the same resources, okay? Uh, memory to be more specific. Interprocess communication, which means one or more processes can exchange uh, data uh, with, with each other, okay, in a safety manner, okay? Portable, this means, uh, for instance, uh, Linux works on, uh, on Android devices, on, uh, on x86 computers and in your embedded system, which is composed by an ARM, okay? Also, Microblaze is supported by Linux. So, just a simple system with enough RAM, around 48 megabytes of RAM, can already run Linux, okay? And it's free and open source, okay? Linux has a large and huge community where you can get information, learn how, uh, how they actually do some of these features, and, uh, and, and you can also can uh, can join this community so it's really cool it's a it's, it's a really nice way to learn as well uh, about programming okay 
So these are the cool topics on uh, on why you should use Linux in your embedded system. Okay. One downside that, for instance, you could argue, okay, so why I should use Linux if I can, uh, for instance, do the job with a bare metal OS like FreeRTOS? Okay, so if your embedded system is really that simple that you don't need these features, you're right, keep with, uh, with, with your bare metal simple FreeRTOS, okay? Uh, these topics that you're going to see by end. But in the beginning, we're going to use Petal Linux, okay? Beta Linux is a, is a free of charge but commercial if you want some support Linux distribution creator, okay? That is, can be used to create uh, to create a ready to use Linux for the microblaze or the Zinc, okay? In this tutorial, we're going to put more focus on the Zinc, okay? Using the Z board, but in the end, we always uh, we also going to see how to to use this in microblaze, okay? Basically. The Beta Linux is going to be responsible to create the following uh, packages that are needed for you to have uh, to have a Linux work in your board. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about uh, about some of them. Okay, first the rootfs, which is the root file system, is this guy here who is going to hold all the files, all the programs, all the direct all the directories in your board. Okay. Uh, here in the, in the Beta Linux, the type of rootfs that you're going to use is the ext4, okay? But you have more of them, and uh, we're going to talk about this later. You have the device tree, which is a kind of uh, text file describing all the, the device and, the, and their drivers that you have in your system, okay? So basically, the device tree is the one who is going to, to inform the Linux that you have, for instance, some IP cores that you created in the PL part and the drivers that are going to be used to, to control them, okay? The Linux kernel itself, which is the main idea of having Linux in your board. The first stage bootloader, which is the guy that we saw earlier that is, is going to be responsible to program the PL part and uh, initialize the Zen processor. Be, uh, actually, this is the guy who is uh, first load when you power up the Zinc, okay? And the U-Boot, which is the guy who is going to load the Linux kernel itself. Actually, he's going to learn to load the Linux kernel and the device tree, okay? And uh, it is a very known piece of software, okay? Where a lot of people use U-Boot in embedded boards to load Linux. So, uh, I'm going to switch now to a presentation that I did in PowerPoint to show a little bit more uh, how Beta Linux works, I'm going to show the commands as well. And, uh, and then in the end, in the lab, we're going to create uh, a, a Beta Linux system, uh, a Beta Linux project, sorry, that's going to be used to load on the Z-board, okay? Yes, so this is the presentation that I mentioned about uh, Z-board and Linux, okay? This is just an introduction on, on Linux, okay? For sure, there is a lot of books and a lot of uh, more information that is, uh, that is available, okay? This is just to have an overview on what we're going to learn, okay? Anyway, this presentation is going to also to be available for you guys, so uh, I'm going to put that on the link, okay, of the video. So, why use Linux on your project? Why is cool, okay? So, uh, by using Linux on your system, you're going to have for free this items here, okay? So you're going to have network and file system support. You're going to have inter-process communication, which means two or more programs can exchange data between them, okay? Memory management, this means uh, our malloc function. So our, our, our program will be able to ask some memory to the system to do something and then give this memory back to other resources, to other programs to use. Multi-threading, okay? Uh, we didn't mention too much, but the Zinc has two cores. It has a, an ARM that has two, uh, two CPU cores. And uh, the, uh, all the programs that we use up to, uh, until now actually didn't use those two cores, okay? So by using Linux, you're going to have a multi-threading infrastructure that is going to exploit this two, that, that uh, two cores for us. We have a lot of device drivers, which means uh, is a kind of specialized software that is going to make a particular hardware available for your system, okay? 
uh, for instance Linux has device drivers for USB cameras uh, GPRS modems uh, really a lot of stuff okay there is a lot of, uh, of uh, open source code available okay uh, really today in the internet you just google some uh, some projects that use Linux and the, normally all of them has the source code available okay why is not so cool to use Linux in your embedded projects okay compile porting the kernel and drivers can sometimes be a challenge okay in this training we're going to start to use a tool called Peta Linux but uh, in the end we're going to do all this by hand and you guys are going to see that sometimes can be tough especially if you're going to port the Linux to a hardware that is not so common okay uh, Linux is complex it takes times to boot compared to bare metal stuff uh, this is true just by using Linux in your system uh, the, com the boot time is long okay normally uh, everything that we did so far in the bare metal uh, without a, a OS to to manage the system for us we just turn on the board and uh, the system was already there kicking and doing something okay in the Linux not like that huh? you can lose up to 10 seconds just to boot Linux so the Linux kernel components okay uh, the Linux kernel is a, uh, Linux is a mon monolithic uh, uh, operation system which has these components here okay we have a memory management system you have the device drivers actually we're going to work a lot on this area here you have uh, a scheduler and tax manager okay which means you can have more than one program running on parallel okay and the Linux kernel will be the one responsible to preempting uh, one of other program to make the user feel that you have one or more programs running in parallel okay you have a file system and drivers for the file system and a network stack okay actually you have here uh, this is actually a new feature on Linux is called device trees okay which are uh, which is a set of uh, is actually a text file that is compiled and boot with with the Linux that specify which uh, which hardware you have available on your board okay and which device driver is responsible to uh, to control that hardware okay we're going to speak uh, of this more in the future uh, but it's cool to know why the device trees are for so basically the device trees are, are the guy responsible to tell to the kernel which hardware you have and uh, which device drivers are needed to handle this hardware okay so uh, the Linux kernel job okay on a system a lot of programs are, are asking for resources at the same time is the job of the kernel to manage all of these demands okay so uh, the kernel as I explained have process management memory management file systems device control and network and all of uh, and you have like zillions of programs asking for these resources at the same time so is the uh, is the job of the kernel to handle all of this all of this okay now let's talk a little bit about uh, hootfs okay on a Linux system several file systems are mounted and create a global hierarchy okay of files and directories of a particular file system on the root file system basically it's just the is this is the is the mix of all your files all of your directories and everything that you have uh, is stored in your system okay uh, we're going to use uh, an SD card okay uh, an SD flash card to boot the uh, our system and the majority of the of of the space used by this guy is the root file system okay you have the bootloader the kernel but a big part is just the files and the device drivers and the programs and all of this okay uh, let's now talk about the system call okay uh, the Linux will offer you a set of function is actually something around 300 functions okay to the programs which we call user space okay and those libraries are available through the the GNU C library so for instance uh, imagine th that inside your program you call printf okay printf is actually is going to call a system call call it write that is made available for you fr uh, from the kernel okay that is actually going to print something on the screen okay uh, we have really we uh, we cannot talk about all these 313 system calls but uh, basically the idea is that the kernel 
is going to offer some API to to play with the system to the user program to the user program uh, apps okay so printf exit uh, f open to open files all of these is uh, are functions that are going to be given to the to the to you okay to you writing a user space program and it's the job of the kernel to give all this kernel and user space memory okay uh, why we are doing the, our programs in the uh, as bare metal okay without no OS all the memory were available for us okay we when we actually uh, access uh, a pointer or uh, pointing to a memory and at a particular address this address is really what you have on the hardware okay is really what you have on the DDR and uh, on, on the Linux is not like that okay the user space have access to a memory called virtual memory okay which is by the way managed as well uh, by the kernel okay which does not mean exactly a physical uh, a physical memory which means for instance if you write something at uh, at a pointer pointing to address 4 this does not mean that actually is going to write and address 4 of the DDR okay is is actually the job of the kernel to manage that memory for you to manage where this memory is going to be uh, to, to be available and, and where, where it's actually going to be allocated okay so here I'm just saying that on Linux uh, the memory is divided in two parts the kernel and the user space and they communicate through system calls It's the system calls that actually mentioned here okay uh, the job of the kernel is to allow multiple user space programs or process and pro uh, and protection between them which means for instance uh, in theory uh, two different programs have access to all the memory okay and actually it's the job of the kernel as well to avoid that a program start to write or read memory from another from a different program okay so this kind of security is uh is managed by the kernel as well and uses a, a piece of hardware called mmu which is which means a memory management unit okay which is going to be the guy uh is really a piece of hardware right? it's an ip core that it sits on the on the arm processor that makes the translation between virtual memory and physical memory okay now device drivers okay on linux uh, sys, uh the hardware okay for instance some ip cores on the pl part is made available to the user space programs through files okay that, that are normally located in slash dev uh, by the way everything on linux is a file okay so it's the job of the device driver to make the user space think that the hardware is just a file that is placed on this slash dev directory okay so uh, when we start to write the device drivers for some uh, ip cores that we're going to write later on the course we're going to create uh, a specialized software called a device driver that is going to initialize and uh, pass parameters and control the uh, this IP core more or less on uh, on like the way that we did when we did in the um, in the in the bare metal IP cores that we are doing pre in previous courses. Okay. The difference is that we are not going to access the the physical memory. We're going to ask the kernel to give us a pointer to that physical memory. But we're going to see that in the future. But now, just remember that the, the job of the device driver is to make the user space think that the hardware is just a file. Okay, is to take out all the complexity of the of a particular hardware. Okay, and make that available to the to the user space programs. Okay. So now is the point that we're going to prepare the uh, our, our Peta Linux system, okay? To create a Linux to boot on our Z board, okay? These are the commands here that you guys need to type to install, okay? Before we install uh, we install Peta Linux, okay? By the way, we're going to use uh, Ubuntu 64-bit. The version is 14.04, okay? So basically, we need all these packages that are here before we install Peta Linux. So here is the download link that you just click here and uh, and you can download Peta Linux for you. Okay, you need also to download the board BSP of your board. In this case, we're going to download the, the board 
BSP of the Z board, okay? BSP stands for board support packages, okay? If you guys don't, don't know, okay? Then we create a directory on the slash opt slash beta linux and we run the installer, okay? This is really simple. If you guys need, I can create a video just showing how to install beta linux, but it's really quite simple. After that, after the beta linux is installed, we need to reconfigure dash. You just type this command here, then you select no. Then, in order to avoid you to all uh, all the time uh, change your path to have the Peta Linux commands available, we just change your uh, your .bash rc script to include this this uh, command here: source slash opt Peta Linux settings .sh. Okay. So let's create a project in the Z board. Okay. The command to create a project in Z board is Peta Linux slash create minus t project because this is what you want to create now is a project minus n the name of the project minus s we pass the the location of our bsp okay then you go to this directory and you just type peta linux build okay this is going to create all the the software packages means you boot device tree linux kernel a file system uh, all that is needed to boot a linux in your z board okay then you copy the em elements of these guys in your slash tftp boot and then to your SD card, okay? I'm going to show how to partition also the your SD card to have the uh, to have your SD card prepared to to load Linux. Basically, you just need an SD card to have the to have a FAT32 available. And that's it. You just copy these files there and you'll be okay. By the way, in on the lab I'm going to do do this by hand so you can see exactly what I'm typing okay so then you check the jumpers if you are configured to boot on the SD for, uh, for the SD card in your Z board I'm going, I'm going also to put uh, an image on how they should boot should do and uh, and then you just <laughs> turn on your board and you're going to see that uh, that the Linux will be available okay here are just two commands that uh, you can run Peta Linux emulated okay this is the command and uh, and how to delete or clean like you do a make clean to to force to recompile everything from scratch configuring peta linux okay uh before that let's just go back here you see that you have a uh, uh, this command here peta linux slash create now you have the peta linux slash config that is going to open this menu here that that you can change it and play it to add or take out some device drivers. Basically, you are configuring the, your kernel, okay? Um, it's really cool. Try to type this command and uh, and change, take some modules, enable, for instance, the bug or some stuff like that in the Linux and see the effect of this in your system, okay? Sometimes you can break the whole thing and then in this case, you run the Peta Linux build minus X MR proper to clean everything from scratch and start again, but it's cool because you got to use it on, on how to play with Linux, okay? So, uh, if you just type peta linux slash config, you're going to open this window here that you can configure the, the kernel. If you type peta linux slash config minus c rootfs, you're going to open a window like this as well, but there you can, uh, for instance, uh, choose which software you want to include in your rootfs, okay? So it's going to be available as soon as you boot, okay? And uh, peta linux slash config minus c kernel, it's going to open this window again. So these and these are basically the same, okay? Uh, here is just a, a command line if you want to create your boot by hand, okay? This is this is basically useful, for instance, if you change your your FPGA part and you have another bit stream, okay? You can use this command here, peta linux uh, minus package minus minus boot minus minus fsbl and then you pass the your ELF image for fsbl and then you can pass another bit stream, okay? Again, this is useful if you, for instance, imagine that you add an IP core, okay? to the FPJ part and you want to make this available you need to change this to create another boot.bin okay uh, by the way 
all the commands in Petal Linux, if you put minus minus help, you can have a list of uh, detailing what the command actually do. Okay, uh, here, ah, okay. The after you do petalinux.build, you're going to have uh, inside your project a directory called image linux uboot.elf, which is the, the place actually in the images you have all the the packages already compiled there and you just copy them to your SD card. Ah, here I'm just showing to you guys how to enable SSH, actually call it drop bear, so you'll be able to to see what is going uh you, you can actually access your Z board through the network okay here I'm going to show how to create a simple app actually just a hello world you just use beta Linux minus create minus T now instead of project you call it apps minus minus the plate C++ and the name of the project okay this is just going to create a C program uh, a compiled C program that is going to be available for you in the uh, in the rootfs this is just a uh, just an image that I copy from the from the Xilinx website to show is more or less a summary of all the Peta Linux commands. Okay. Here is what you have inside your SD card. Uh, basically, in the boot.bin you have the SB FSBL, the first stage bootloader, you boot, and the uh, and the PL bit stream. You have the kernel image. And the device tree, okay. Uh, again, guys, huh, if you, uh, I'm going to make this presentation available, so you can just read it and do all the things at your own pace. Okay. Here, I'm just saying that the partitions that are needed, okay. Basically, you, we need just two, actually, just one, the the FAT32 that we're going to put the boot.bin, the device tree. And the uh, and the kernel image, okay. And this second uh, is the second partition here. You can be used later. You can mount in your in your system to program and do whatever you want. It's going to be kind of the hard drive of your uh, of your system. Ah, cool. Here is uh, I'm just showing what is the minimum system that you need to run Linux, okay. Basically, you just open Vivado and you put a zinc. And you don't need no IP core. And by default, all this uh, this ink processor, you'll be ready already to use Linux. Okay. Okay, guys. So this is uh, this is my Ubuntu machine. Okay. Uh, we have already Beta Linux installed. Okay. All the packages that are needed to be installed uh, are already there. Okay. So uh, we just run Beta Linux create minus T project because it's the name. Is the type of the project that we are, that you are going to create minus n the name of the project? Let's call it simple project, okay? Minus s. There uh, here we pass the uh, our board support package. In this case, is Avinet Z board, okay? We just press enter. So the project has been created. We just go to this project, okay? If we just create the uh, type the tree we have already some stuff created okay now we just call peta linux build okay and we wait the the linux compilation to be done this can take up to five minutes or something like this okay i'm going to pause the video and uh we we bring back when it's done Okay, guys, so now that the build phase is done, okay, we have some stuff that are could be interest for us. If we go and uh, list our TFT pboot, okay, you have some guys that has been built for us. It's just a matter now to copy those guys to our SD card. Here, the system.dtb is the device tree, com the compiled device tree, and uh, VM Linux and Z image. Are, uh, are are the Linux built itself? But one is for the image, if I remember, is for U boot, and the VM Linux is the, just the image, plain as it is. Okay, so uh, we have another int uh, interesting directory for us is the pre built directory. If you come here, so pre built Linux directory. If we do an ls here, 
and go to in sorry images we check here that we have the boot.bin file for us okay so basically what we're going to do to uh to avoid checking which file we need to put on the sd card we're just going to copy the the content of this directory here and the the image that has been created the image that has been created in tftp boot okay so that's it we're just going to copy now these items on the on the sd card and we're going to bring them to to the z board and uh and turn the board on with the with the proper switches on okay okay guys so let's just copy the content of this directory here okay prebuilt linux images so cp everything to media in my case boot okay uh the other thing that we need to do is to go to our our image directory and copy all the rest to our SD card as well okay uh, I'm just now going to show the content of the SD card and uh, and how the SD card is partitioned okay So guys, basically this is the content of our FAT32 partition, okay, in our SD card. This is the boot.bin, which is the one that is uh, is going to have you boot the first stage bootloader in our bitstream. Uh, the image is the is the Linux image in the format of you boot, okay. Uh, those guys here are basically our rootfs, and here is our device tree compiled okay now we are ready let's just uh put the sd card on the z board and turn it on okay guys this is the content of, of our sd card uh, uh, more specifically the fat 32 partition okay so what we have here that is important for us the boot.bin okay which is the guy who is going to have uh mixed together our first stage bootloader our uh, our bit stream okay and uh and you boot our device tree and the image which is the the linux image but prepare to be loaded from you boot okay those guys here are actually our rootfs okay and uh after all this is done and created here in your sd card we are ready to to put this on the on the z board okay so let's just close this and let's jump to the Z okay guys so let's just turn on our Z board okay this is here uh, the configuration of the of putty okay which is a is a terminal here we just to mention to you where our board got detected okay if you just type the command D message okay you're going to see in our case we have a guy here in tty acm0 which is our serial port so we just go come to this guy here and uh put open okay this is actually now we jump to uboot we we didn't open linux yet what we can do we just type here help this is the list of commands that you have in your boot if you put oh sorry print env is all the environment variables that you have available okay in our case we we, we need to run this command here okay boots boot cmd okay so let's do run boot cmd and now we are just starting our kernel okay so basically that's it it's trying to to check the network interface um, hoot is log to login is username hoot password hoot okay and we are there this is basically our our hoot fs okay now is empty we're going to learn now how to create a simple hello world program 
and change a little bit the configuration of uh, of Linux okay so if you put here EF config we can see that we don't have yet our um, our Ethernet interface turning on but what we can do we just press EF config e h zero nine two one six eight zero ten for instance up okay in our in our uh, in our Linux board we just enable this guy as well but in at a different address let's put for instance 200 and up So, probably if we ping now our board, she's there, okay? Uh, actually now, uh, probably we cannot because we don't have the, the SSH enabled. We cannot as well. So what we're going to do? We're going out, we're going out to change our, our HootFS to have something called a drop, uh, drop bear or drop, no, yes, drop bear that is going to have the SSH enable for us, okay? But basically guys, this is Linux already, okay? So let me just reboot, okay? And uh, I'm going to pause the video and uh, show you how to change the configurations, okay? Okay guys, so let us just now configure the kernel, okay? Let's imagine, for instance, that now we want to, for instance, enable some debug messages, okay? Just for fun. Uh, let's check. Uh, show time information on the print case. So it's basically going to show that uh, at what, at which point the, the, the kernel message has been called, for instance, okay? So, he asked here to save the configuration. He's going to save. Uh, we also said that we want to enable the, the drop bear. I always confuse with Dropbox, but no, drop bear. So, petalinus config minus C. Instead of kernel now, we put root FS. And uh, basically, what we need is uh, file system packages, network, drop bear and we enable okay we enable both so let's save it now what we need to do after this is done we run uh, peta linux build peta linux build okay by the way guys uh, notice that are, we are here in the in the simple proj directory okay this is needed we need to, you need to run these commands all in the in the project directory and uh, he's going to do this job. Let me just, while he's doing, change the, the SD card because we need to copy those images again. And uh, well, it will be fast. Let me just. So he's now creating new boot again and uh, creating the HootFS. Okay guys, so this is our TFTP boot. This is after the build is done. So we just copy here. We apply this to all the files. Basically we just copy again all the, all the stuff ha that has been generated, okay? After this is done, we just unmount the SD card, put again in our Z board, and let's boot it. Okay, guys, so let's run PuTTY, which are, is our console terminal. Uh, we turn on our Z board, we load the configuration, okay, and let's open it. So 
so we, we run again the boot, the boot command and uh, now you can see that you have the time information that we enable uh, on the Linux kernel and uh, let's check if the drop bear is installed so basically if, the, if it's okay oh look cool so basically we log on as hoot hoot um, EF config is disabled so let's enable our network h0 Okay, Ethernet is there. Uh, let us check if, if we have a, the Ethernet enable in our case. We don't. So let's enable our Ethernet connection. And uh, now let's see if we can ping. It's okay, we can ping it. Let's connect. Our board. Let me check. Um, okay, we have already some configuration. Let's disable and try again. Yes. And okay, now this is our Z board. Okay. Uh, this is all the commands that we have. By the way, guys, uh, we are in the Z board now, okay? You can see this is the Z board. Basically, the same thing that we have here on Putty, okay? So now let's learn how to uh, how to add a simple hello world through uh, through Peta Linux as well, okay? And run here in our system. So, to create a, a simple app, okay, we can use a peta linux command as well. Uh, if we type peta linux create minus t now apps and use template C and some project name, hello world, let's say, okay, he's going to create something in this directory here components apps hello world. So, let's go to this guy and see what we have here. So we have here apps, hello world, let's see what we have there, vi hello world.cpp, and it's just a simple skeleton of a program, okay? So uh, hello Linux peta world, okay, more than fine, no problem. Okay, so let's go back to our project directory here, and let's call, let's just check if we do peta linux config minus c rootfs. Just to verify if the if our sample is in our rootfs and is not okay, so let's just add it. Okay, so exit, exit, yes, and let's then run Peta Linux build. So uh, after you create the app, don't forget to configure our rootfs to also include this this uh, this new program. Okay, so let's do Peta Linux build, and uh, after this is done same process the the root fs will be in your um, in our slash tftp boot we just copy the the root fs files okay and uh put them on the sd card and run uh, and run the uh, run the z board for your for your sd card okay okay now the that the build is complete let's run putty Oh, sorry. Okay. Run boot cmd. Okay. And uh, if everything is okay, our program. Hello World should be already be included in the in the root file system. Okay. Normally, if we open here the TFTP boot directory, okay. And let me just open here. Our our rootfs has in the slash bin directory our Hello World. 
okay so let's log log on on our z board oh, sorry in our bean directory we should have okay hello world is there so let's execute them okay cool so it's more or less <laughs> what you created so uh let's summarize what we learned so far guys so we learned that by using Peta Linux, we can create Linux distributions, okay, that are compatible with the Z board or uh, boards that use the Zinc or Microblaze, okay. What, all that you need is a board support package. But normally, what you do is that you create your uh, your custom board with a hardware that is really similar to a reference one. Let's say Z board, for instance. And uh, with Peta Linux, you you can create the whole to hold the whole tool chain to build Linux, build your boot, build your first first stage bootloader, it's done for you. So uh, let's finish the day. Okay, it's a lot of information for you guys to digest. And the next video we're going to learn how to create device drivers. Huh? But before we're going to create probably in Vivado HLS a simple IP core that is going to be uh, that's going to be added to Peta Linux, okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do that and create a simple device driver to to control this IP core, okay? So, uh, thanks for watching guys, if you like, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next video.